Welcome to the East Brunswick Town Council Budget Workshop, March 12, 2018. Uh, Ms. Perry, please call the roll. Councilwoman Clark? Here. Councilman Hughes? Here. Councilman Stanley? Oops, not yet. Councilman Wendell? Here. Council President Spadafino? Here. First to uh, introduce the uh, budget, uh, Mayor Dr. Brad Cohen. We're not starting with the budget? No, we'll do that for the second meeting. Good evening, everybody. In regards to the 2018 East Brunswick Township budget, after years of spiraling and unsustainable tax increases, this year's municipal budget will be going up a mere 0.36% for an increase of approximately $140,000 on a $67 million budget or half a penny on the tax rate. This is essentially a flat budget. As you all know, final tax bills will depend upon the results of the county budgeting process as well as the local East Brunswick Board of Education. I have heard from our residents <coughs> and I have responded. At 65% of the tax bill, if there is any hope to control your final tax bill, you must make your voices heard to those you who have entrusted to manage your schools. In working towards a flat municipal budget, I required four factors. One, no one-time gimmicks gimmicks that would result in boomerang increases the following year. Two, each department had to look to reasonably cut discretionary spending. Three, each department worked to maximize revenues without burdening already overburdened residents. And four, we could not accomplish this by assuming irresponsible levels of debt. The markets recognized this effort as Moody's Investment Services again awarded the township with a double A plus rating the second highest possible rating. This is much better than most communities in the state or for the state itself for that matter as it allows us to finance at very low rates. This is not only good for the municipal budget but it is good for the East Brunswick Board of Education who regularly engage in shared services agreements with the township in order to borrow at our very low rates. Major reasons for our decreased costs this year are as follows. One, and foremost, renegotiation of our township group health insurance rates. This was the single largest reason for tax increases the last two years. If we continued with the same plan, we would have seen another half a million to million dollar increase. So we did go out to bid and shaved about a million dollars off the costs, resulting in no increase in health care costs for this year. Two, we consolidated the Department of Public Works and the Water Sewer Department with one director, streamlined our services, and cross-trained our staff. Three, we reduced the workforce where we could, asking people to do more with, with less, and they responded. Four, the library budget was held flat. We've been giving approximately 2% increases yearly, amounting to over $100,000 per year on a library budget that already receives $1.2 million above the statutory requirement. Due to excellent management and increased interest in East Brunswick, we saw increased revenues. First, this budget will call for the full pilot payments from the Toll Brothers project near Walmart. Two, we had increased construction and development fees due mostly to several commercial building projects here in town. And three, we had increased fund balance due to strict management. It is no surprise that the bulk of revenues come from residential property taxes as East Brunswick is 80% residential. However, if we are to see ourselves to a place where property taxes are at reasonable competitive levels, we must move off of our dependency on residential property taxes to fully fund municipal or township operations. This means that the pie must get bigger by encouraging business, commercial, and industrial growth where possible. Now this has already begun to happen as we have seen many new businesses open in East Brunswick along our commercial corridor and other areas. Redevelopment is moving full steam ahead, but will take several years to have a significant economic impact. But all signs point to the fact that we are starting to witness this shift. If you turn to page four of item 3B in the municipal data sheet, 
And please look at the shift from 2017 to 2018 on the revenue from local property taxes compared to miscellaneous, which is essentially business, commercial, and industrial tax revenue. You'll note that the percentage of the tax base that comes from local property taxes dropped 1.2%. This is the first time we've ever seen a drop like this in years. A movement of 1.2% may not seem so impressive, but let me assure you that a small percentage of a very large number is indeed significant. Now, I'll refrain from calling this a trend as we would need to see several years to make that statement, but it is a very good sign. Areas of uncertainty going forward include the following. One, all of our unions have yet to settle contracts which expired at the end of last year. Two, Governor Murphy has yet to decide on the 2% cap or Chapter 78 contribution, which is the health benefit cost sharing. Employees are expected to contribute approximately $825,000 towards employee health care costs this year alone. Three, health care costs themselves are unpredictable, and since we are self-funded, as such, our rates will completely depend upon our experience. And four, the effect of the new federal tax law on New Jersey and East Brunswick property values. If they drop, as some have predicted, we could see tax appeals. The municipality is responsible for 100% of any refunds, as I know you all know, and cannot collect back any money from the Board of Ed, the county, the library, or fire districts. Since the 2018 tax filing will not occur until April of 2019, it is doubtful that this will have an impact this fiscal year. Budget presentations are about to begin and each director along with the administration are here to answer any of your questions. These proceedings are taped and open to the public. Members of the public are welcome to come to council meetings, voice their concerns in the public session, and are free to contact me directly at the mayor's office. I'd like to thank each of the directors, the entire staff of the township, Mr. Joseph Crisculo, our BA, for all of their hard work. And again, a special note and a special thank you to Mr. Lou Neely and the finance department for making East Brunswick one of the models of municipal finance at its best. I thank the Township Council for their efforts and commitment to our residents, and I'm honored pre to present this 2018 municipal budget for your approval and uh, review. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Cohen. To start off uh, the uh, workshop, we're starting with the uh, assessor's office. So will the representative from the assessor's office please come up, state your name and position. Do you want me up here or over there? Wherever. Good evening. My name is Frank Cologne, and I am the tax assessor for the township. Um, as I stated in the past, we don't have any projects in the assessor's office. Everything we do is statutorily mandated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of what we do, and then uh, afterwards we'll discuss the budget, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have regarding the budget. So in our office, the responsibility of the assessor is to discover, list, and determine the taxability of each property in town. Defensive property assessments, preparation and certification of the tax rolls, notification of property owners of their assessments. Those are the green cards that are called your assessment notices that I give you, that I send out in February. Um, review and approve, disapprove property tax deductions as well as exemptions. We do not determine the tax rate, nor do we collect the taxes. We just value the property. So in our office, if you are interested, you can get an application for senior citizens deduction, disabled persons deduction, surviving spouses deduction, veterans and veterans tax deductions, provided all of which will get you $250 savings on your taxes, provided you meet the qualifications. We also have uh, applications for disabled veterans exemption, qualified New Jersey war veterans that have been declared 100% disabled or 100% tax exempt. Surviving spouse of a deceased disabled veteran is also entitled to an exemption, provided they hold title to the property and have not remarried. Now moving on to what we do at this time of the year, tax appeals. 
In 2017, there was an increase in the filing of county board tax appeals, um, due, of course, to attorney solicitations. No offense, Mike. <laughs> The good news is that there was a decline, uh, decrease in the amount of refunds that were given back. Uh, and this is good news because as the mayor just said, I mean, this is good news because as you know, property taxes are paid, uh, pay for the municipality, the library, the county, and the board of education. But when it comes to paying a refund, as the mayor stated, the township is on the hook. In 2017, there was $270,000 in refunds. Okay, which is less than it was last year. So moving on to the budget. The budget basically is uh, a shoestring budget. It's 92% it, of it goes to pay for the salaries and the other 8% goes to pay for other expenses such as printing, binding, uh, education, consultant fees, and whatnot. Are there any questions? Mike? Mike, I'm sorry. Uh, Council President, um, can, can you tell me through, I know we had discussed this uh, last year, uh, the arc of our legal expenses that are related to tax appeals. Um, you know, we had an increase last year in expenses, but that was due to, I think, some litigation going on with Tower Center. Well, yeah. How do we see that trend moving forward? Are those <laughs> legal expenses associated with the assessor's budget, or where would those be found? Well, it's paid out of the legal fund. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as the fees are concerned, once the towers are settled, there's going to be a decrease in, in, the, in the funds. I mean, the decrease in the amount of money spent right. to defend that property. Right. And a lot of time, a lot of litigation hours. Litigation-intensive uh, right. project. Do we have a, a timeline that we think we're on with, with those? Uh, well, we're, almost, we're actually cases? almost to the end. Okay. And we're just waiting for the other side to... It's really in the works right now. We're just looking for the, you know, both parties to sign. And is that, is that number that we are discussing that we're at the point that we're going to sign, is that reflected in this budget? No, it's not, because it's part of 2018. There's not even a judgment for it yet. But we anticipate that will come this year? Yes. But it's not in the budget? No. What? A rough estimation? I, I, I would rather All not right. okay. give you that number, because there is no judgment. So how will we pay for it if it is not budgeted? I guess that would be my next question. That that's probably that's probably there. beyond his. That's his, probably not, yes, yeah. not for you. But since we're discussing it, how do we plan on paying for that? We reserve for tax appeals every year, and uh, based upon the conversation that I've had with Frank and with the attorney, I have sufficient funds reserved for the In tax appeals. Okay. I've got one more, but I'll, I'll let okay. everybody else have. Is there any other questions? Just what are the figures? In other words, what's your increase from last year to this year on your budget? What's what's the increase in the budget? The increase, there's really no increase in the budget. I mean, it's just due, there's just, there's no increase in the budget. <laughs> so when I'm looking on page 14, mm -hmm. is the, it, is the, what's the total, is there a total on your, in these worksheets, just your department. The total, the control total is uh, 343,000. All right, that so. That was for 17. That's salaries. That's salaries only. Right, so and salary, so salaries are going up 68, 68, 10. 38. 30, 38, 10. 38, 10. 30, 38, 10. 30, 30, 10. Okay. And then. And the other thing didn't go up. Everything else is oh, flat. It didn't go up. Everything else is flat. There hasn't been any increase in this. Halfway down, 15, 37, 3. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to say, too, uh, regarding the consultant fee, um, that consultant fee, we pay a portion of the consultants that we need, and it goes, goes, 
Duke also goes to pay for some of the legal fees, but the majority come out of the legal fund. Councilman Hughes? I have two questions. One is Good. on the assessment fees. Is there a way for council to have a a rough estimation, not publicly. We can do this in closed session or someone can, can give you the numbers. But if I'm looking at fund balance, I, I see a number that's just in fund balance. And it sounds like we are allocating a percentage of that. Or we're allocating a dollar amount of fund balance to pay for something we know is coming this year. It would be helpful in the overall context of the budget if we know how much we're planning or we are reserving in fund balance to pay that. I'll send you an email on that. No. And then once I receive the you know the judgment, you guys are all privy to it. You may have it. Right, understood. And so the council, I mean, this is a fairly large case. I mean our tax our tax <coughs> appeals in, in in what we build our, our attorney for tax appeals was, was ninety eight thousand dollars. So this I, something tells me that number is not going to be small. Um, so that's just something to keep in context as we as we move through the process. My other question, Council President is, and, and I don't want to put you on the spot up here if you're not prepared, but I don't see the redevelopment agency listed on our budget workshops. So are we going to have a separate session where we're going over their budget? I understand they're an independent agency, but they are wholly and completely funded right now by the Township Council. I think that... Uh, I was under the impression that it was going to be yeah, separate. I, yeah. I, I understand I that. Would, I just I don't see it. I just don't see it on the schedule. You funded for it in the in the bond last year. So do we have? So they don't have a budget. They have, they have a budget, but they report to the agency. The agency should have the budget. So we give them their money, and we have no oversight in how they spend their their dollars. Basically, yeah. but I will give you. I have. I have the budget. Everything that's been spent, how much has been put into the budget, is is available. Would just like everyone on council to know, when we sure. passed that ordinance. When we created the agency, it was told to all of us up here that we have oversight on how they spend their money because we are funding them. And now we are hearing a complete 180 from what we were told when we passed that. It's a public, it's a, it's a public document uh, for you and the public to, to well, review. No, They're just not required to have a hearing before you. I would like to make a, a motion then, and I'll see if I have a second, to add them to the list and have a report on how they are. Because we have a million dollars floated for, for a bond. If we are paying 10% of that bond, that's $100,000. If we are going to use the full $100,000, are we... And I would save this. I would save this for the redevelopment portion, but I don't see one. Are we planning on spending a hundred thousand dollars? Are we budgeting for that? Because if we're not, then we have money to play around with. If they plan on spending five hundred thousand dollars, then then we don't. But right now in the budget, we can't see what they're planning on using out of that million dollars. We don't have the entire million dollars in there. It's it's about three. I, I'm putting my. Exactly. And you don't have to tonight. Okay. If you're not prepared, don't. Um, there's about there's 320,000 in there right now, and everything is basically going towards the professionals that we're using for the project and reimbursements for education. And my question with redevelopment isn't to to just bemoan the lack of oversight, but if we, what are we budgeted then? And and Lou, you may know, in our actual operating budget to pay on the down payment. This year we're paying uh, $180,000 towards the million dollars. So we're retiring by $180,000. So we're, what are we, yeah, so I guess I'm confused. And, and You're starting to confuse me, Council Yeah. But let, do, you, do you have a direct question that you want the Is mayor to ask, or do you have a direct uh, motion that you want to make? Yeah, yes, I'd like, to make, I'd like to make a motion first. I, I okay. do have a motion on the table, and I got sidetracked with Robert's rule. So I have a motion on the table if we can add re the redevelopment agency to the council agenda uh, budget workshop in two weeks from today. Okay. I second the motion. Councilwoman Clark seconds. All right, so. Can I, can I ask a question on that? I, it, is the agency, is that a conflict in the statute for a redevelopment agency to respond to the council or present to the council i'm asking i'm not saying that it should or should not be i mean i think you know having clarity on the whole thing is good for everyone i just want to know that we're not 
co you know, conflicting things. Councilman, what I've, I've seen happen is uh, the agency will develop its budget and then they usually send the executive director to a council meeting to present to the council members and to answer questions the council members have. And the, and the reason I ask from just a structural perspective, or I'm still getting off track because we have to call, we have to take a vote on the motion that's on the floor. So I can't All right. ask any more questions. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. I will schedule the chairman, I gather, of the redevelopment agency to make a presentation at the next budget exactly. workshop, which is on the 26th. The executive director. director. The executive director. And, and the reason I, I ask, and, and now I can zero in on my point, is from a structural perspective, I know that we are planning for the redevelopment agency to be paid for by, by fees associated mm -hmm. with redevelopment. The reason I bring that up is if those fees, and in our first year we're spending $320,000, I'm not sure how much we're going to be soaking developers, but I can't imagine that, that a fee can be you know, exorbitantly high. I, that money, it, in my understanding, goes to the agency to fund their, uh, fund their operations. But that also means that the township does not see any of that money. It goes directly to the agency. So none of that money, how I understand it, unless I'm wrong, is applied to tax relief. That money goes to funding an agency. That's correct. Thank you. I don't need to keep you up there. So, so we'll prepare, you'll prepare a presentation on the budget. Correct. What's the what's the uh, next date? The twenty sixth at seven o'clock. Okay. I, if the council president feels it'll fit on that, otherwise we can do it at another meeting. I mean, you, if soon. you guys want me to come back on another day, that's fine too. Come back when you to have you. everything together. I mean, I don't want you to yeah. come back in two weeks if you don't have if you, if it's not ready. Yeah, I, only, I want, only I want because ready. in the next two weeks there's going to be quite a few things happening. Yeah, just when the it's agency, ready. and I'd rather have it all worked out before I meet with you. Is that sufficient? Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, I, I would assume there's some budget document we're working off of. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up uh, in the workshop is planning and engineering. Please uh, state your name and position. Good evening, Greg Pokolsky, Director of Planning and Engineering. Thank you. Uh, very briefly, I'll, I'll summarize the 2018 budget. We're pretty consistent with last year's budget except for a couple line items which I'll address specifically as I get to it. But what I'd first like to do is give some highlights because they kind of roll over from 17 into 18, but I'd like to give you some quick highlights as to the 17. From a road improvement standpoint, last year we did about two and a half miles of roadway. Uh, we also did uh, four different water main streets. We did University, Corona, and Sherry. Road as well as Mason Avenue. We, fin we just finished that up uh, earlier this year. University of Corona was a complete overlay afterwards. Sherry and Mason will just be a trench repair or were a trench repair for those. We also did several drainage projects, uh, Eldridge Road drainage off of Dutch Road as well as Stagecoach Run drainage. Um, an emergency project came up during the year with uh, while we were renovating the construction inspection department and um, we did the municipal building main entrance reconstruction, which uh, council is fully aware of. We also applied for municipal aid um, for Dunham's Corner Road between Riders Lane and Cranberry Road, the northern end of Cranberry Road. Uh, we received funding from the state on that. In addition, we were just notified last week, two weeks ago, that we received $510,000 towards Rouge Lane improvements between the Firehouse and Winton Road. We'll be designing those improvements later this year, but by the time the contracts get to us from DOT, that'll be a 2019 construction. We're also waiting to hear back from the uh, 2018 Local Freight Impact Fund for Edgeboro Road. We applied for uh, funds in, in excess of $1.6 million for the reconstruction slash resurfacing of Edgeboro. So hopefully we'll be hearing uh, on that shortly. From an, on the engineering end of site inspections, whenever somebody builds anything new in town on the private end of things, uh, they have to post escrow. We generated $123,000 last year 
in income from, from the escrow accounts for various inspections. Now that, that went in to offset, and I'll, I'll point that out when I get to the budget, it went in, into the overtime account uh, but I think we net it after we paid overtime out. We netted like seventy-five, seventy-six thousand uh, dollars. That was a, a record year. It was a full year. Never stopped. Uh, worked right through the winter. On the construction inspection side of things, we we issued permits with a total fee value of over one point four million dollars, which was a little higher than the previous year. Uh, I expect probably the same amount. This year, however, uh, as last week, uh, DCA just announced that there will be some permits that uh, will no longer be needed by residents. So it's actually gonna reduce our permit count by about $80,000 per year. That's for roofing, as well as siding primarily, and uh, doors and windows. There's some other minor things. but So that'll reduce that 1.6 that we collected this year by, by about 80,000. Uh, the smaller Which I towns. Was very, I was surprised at that. I know the smaller towns are taking a huge hit. That's where they make True. most of their income. But w with East Brunswick having larger projects, it, it shouldn't is be critical. Roofing is a critical yeah. thing too. I'm surprised. Uh, as I said before, we completed the remodeling of the construction department. Um, it, we've gotten a lot of fabulous comments on that. Moving ahead to 2018. Uh, we awarded the pavement management program several months ago. Uh, that's $1.7 million this year. Uh, we'll be doing about four miles of roadway with that. In addition, the county is gonna be resurfacing just about every county road this year. I think it's about eight and a half miles of roadway that the county is gonna be uh, overlaying. In addition, we'll be doing Dunham's Corner Road reconstruction between Riders Lane and Cranberry Road North. Uh, the plans right now are down the state waiting for their blessing, and then we'll be bidding that in the next month. So that'll be ready as soon as school lets out. Uh, Edgeboro Road, we were originally scheduled to for construction later this year, but we're kind of waiting to see uh, whether we get this grant or not before we uh, proceed. If we don't get the grant, then I, it might go in the fall of this year. If we get the grant, it'll be a 2019 project. We'll also be installing uh, bike lanes as part of the Dunham's Corner Road project. Uh, and we're also gonna extend that down Hardenburg Lane and tie down into Bicentennial Park. Uh, there is currently the traffic signal at the intersection of uh, Dunham's Corner Road and Hardenburg Lane is being designed. Again, that all design will be completed this year. We'll get all approvals and that'll be ready for 2019 construction. We are also gonna be beginning uh, the design process with Middlesex County for several uh, intersection improvements. That being Fern Road and Cranberry Road, which is long overdue. That temporary signal has been operating for in excess of 25 years. Uh, in addition, OBT and Ruse Lane will also be uh, constructed and uh, uh, I should say designed. The design will begin. Working with the county, things are slower, you know. So I, I envision those projects probably not being constructed maybe until 2020. Uh, but hopefully, we can push them along. FastTrack.gov, the software that we use in construction inspection as well as planning and engineering, what we're gonna do this year is we're going to go tablet-based, we're gonna start the tablet-based process for the inspectors in the building inspection department. That'll begin later in the summer. Um, we've gone to tablet-based on the engineering end of things. It doesn't necessarily hook into FastTrack.gov, but, but we're doing our inspections tablet-based, and I'll point to a line item in the budget that we need increase because of uh, the tablets and uh, cellular connections. Um, I believe that's all I had there. Now, as it relates to the budget itself, I'd just like to point out some line items. Like I said, pretty much it, it remains the same. Under the Division of Engineering, in the overtime account, you, you sh we show uh, 62,945. That, that, if you add that to the 10,000, there's your 72,000. Uh, we had about 35,000 in overtime for our inspectors. The overtime? 
basically that's uh, we, we do design they, they work extended hours in the summer in order to get these projects done in that short window that we have between June and August so the construction isn't just eight to four it's seven to six sometimes especially when you're putting water mains in because you really you, you can't stop at four o'clock you got to stop at a certain point where you're done with a hydrant or a valve or something like that um, continuing on division of uh, engineering under the telephone charges that's where uh, we went up uh, about eighteen hundred dollars no a little less sixteen hundred dollars that was for three new tablets that we have for the year that'll be hooked up cellular under division of planning under professional consultants you'll see a reduction of fifty thousand dollars that reduction is for the redevelopment professionals that we had in the budget the year before that has all been moved now to the redevelopment agency and I believe those are the only ones I wanted to highlight all the others are, are pretty much the same but if anybody has any questions I'll be glad to answer Councilman Hughes questions, General. Uh, so the economic development consultant is out of this budget we had for years the director of economic development position in planning and engineering is that still in the planning and engineering budget no. where is that located now the I don't think it was called the director yeah the, the office of economic yeah. development whatever the, whatever the Cohen position yeah, yeah yeah whatever the phrasing the position has been eliminated and now we have a new Frank has taken on different responsibilities as well as Jonathan Jonathan yeah. right so where would his salary be located Jonathan's uh, salaries in the business administrator's office okay is there any particular reason why we would not house him under the redevelopment agency's budget if our other economic development consultants are housed in that budget I think his uh, role and responsibilities uh, last year when the mayor presented it indicated that uh, his scope of service is going to be larger than just redevelopment and uh, he does a lot of work for the administration and and for coordination and has valid work functions and therefore his salary should be uh, in the uh, operating budget what is what is our timeline for the budget this isn't a question for Greg so you can even go and take that the uh, <laughs> our timeline for the budget when do we plan on having our public hearing is that in two weeks or is that in uh, four you, you cannot have the public hearing until 28 days after you introduced it so uh, 28 days April will not make the first because meeting in April. As I so it's going to be the second meeting in April, the 23rd I, of April. As I understand, some of that, that scope is narrowing. And, I, and we don't have the business administrator uh, listed here for budget workshops uh, either. So uh, in, in my opinion, I would think that, that that salary and that position at this point should be funded by the, by the redevelopment agency, frankly. And I think that that is the place for it um, I, would, I, I don't have the exact numbers but I'd, I'd like to make a motion to move that from the business administrator's office into the redevelopment agency and pay it that way one one that reduces the uh, the impact on the budget and administration uh, number two is that we are hoping that the redevelopment agency is self-sustaining so ultimately it will be the businesses and the people who come in to redevelop the township who will ultimately pay that salary uh, and from my understanding his scope is to work closely with our economic development consultants who's already housed in that budget um, and I, we can we can shave a, a pretty decent chunk off of the, the, the reason I'm coming from this perspective and to put it in and to put it into broader context is to me you know we can pat ourselves on the back and we can say that you know we came close to a flat budget or uh, to me it's binary it's black and white you're either raising taxes or you are not um, and we've got half a cent left to go I, I think that's attainable frankly in the budget to get to zero uh, part of that would would be shifting a primarily economic development position to our economic development agency can I can I ask I mean sure. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you but I think that's something we, we 
hear some more of the presentations and, and sure. have that that's, conversation. That's why I asked for the timeline of when my, when my cuts would need to be in to not delay the process, because I have a few other ideas too, and some of the, some of the departments in which I, I have those ideas aren't necessarily listed in, in the budget workshop sheet, sheet. So I defer to the council president, when would be the time to discuss those sorts of things, because we don't have the business administrator's office up here. Uh, I can't call on you. <laughs> I was going to May ask, I ask you to address the key. That this is a budgetary, this is, these are hearings. This is, mm -hmm. we're not done. I just presented a budget. I don't think that those are necessarily bad ideas. Can we keep a list of them and instead of sure. voting on them at the time, let's kind of see where we stand at the sure. end of these budget reviews and take all those suggestions and then work up the, the budget at the end as opposed to doing it piecemeal where we you haven't yet to even hear from other departments yet. Totally Personally, correct. I don't think that's such a terrible idea. Yeah, totally correct. And, and my reason for saying it is I know, and Nanette probably knows better than all of us, is I, I had the same situation, I think it was last year or the year before that, where we had made substantial changes to the budget, I think at the last budget workshop, and it, it shifted our entire timeline of adoption because we then needed to go back out to to advertise that budget number because we changed it. If you change the That's budget, if you do the budget right. amendment and it's within a certain amount of money, then yes, you do have to go back out and Right, and they, the only reason I'm saying is I, I'm not trying to delay the process, so if we can just get those those I'll deadlines, I'm lists. happy to not slow down the process, but I'm, I'm just I'll trying to get us to zero okay. as close as we can. Well, any other suggestions that you have as we go along, we'll try to prepare for them as equitably and quickly as possible so that we can yes yeah, some of mine aren't in, aren't in department so me and you yeah. will talk after the meeting on, on when we'd like to bring them up um, april 9th is the meeting that is in between after the budget hearings are done and before we adopt so april 9th mm -hmm. we'll make the list as the mayor suggests on april 9th we'll present the list to you and then you can determine how you want to address it okay that sounds good okay and planning engineering do you, you don't deal with the licensing fees right of of you know is that under the clerk's budget, like like a, like a health spa, like a? That's all mine. That's all you. Uh, liquor licenses, all that's you. That's all mine. That's all you, I know how to. Vape shops. <laughs> yeah, right. I know how to. Vape <laughs> <laughs> shops. Vape shops. Oh, vape yeah. shops. I, I have nothing further. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just Ms. Clark. Yes, this is not dollars and cents or money on the budget, but with all of the resurfacing and all of the scheduling, county and municipal, is there going to be any hope of coordination? with the county so that there are certain neighborhoods like where I'm living I think there are two major thoroughfares that are on the list for work and that God makes apples the county's going to be out there maybe the same time the township I, I've been uh, discussing the schedule primarily with uh, as it relates to the, the, the roads that are around schools obviously we don't want those done until school's out uh, Old Bridge Turnpike is a disaster right now, so the, the intention is to get them in there as soon as Chittick is out of school for the summer and, and get that resurfaced. They do give us a schedule. There is some flexibility, and we'll be working with them knowing that we have 20 or so roads that we're going to be doing at the same time. Like, we don't want to do Cranberry Road and Dunham's Corner Road be paving at the same time. So we'll be working with them and, and nailing down a schedule uh, with them as well. So Okay, and the bike lanes that... Uh on Dunham's Corner. Yes. Are, we're going to be utilizing all of that macadam that's... Yes. yes. Okay, so that's, is that, am I naive in thinking that that's basically striping? It's primarily striping. We, you know, at the intersections with the traffic signals, in order to, to uh, create a bike lane through a traffic signal, you got to modify the, the traffic signal plan. So the plan right now is to go to a point where the traffic signal plan stops and at that point there'll be a sign directing the bicyclist to get off the bike and walk the bike through the intersection until we get to the point where we're going to modify that signal like we are working on we've directed the consultant to look at uh hardenberg and dunham's now so mm -hmm. his plan will be developed with with that thought in mind the other signal at, at uh, Riders and Dunham's is a county signal, and actually the state maintains it, so it's a whole other. Uh, I've been in, in, in touch with off. them about that. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's what you're going to see now. You're going to see a bike lane. It's going to stop. It's going to be a sign saying, you know, walk your bike through the intersection, and it'll pick up on the other side of the intersection. Okay, thank you. Councilman Window. 
Uh, with these record numbers of uh, roads being resurfaced, is your overtime budget going to be affected by that? No, because what, what happens is our, you know, our overtime, I think Lou budgets, it's a little over $10,000 for overtime, but but everything we make from the from the development end of things goes into that. So we always have a surplus. Like we didn't use any of the 10,000. We had like 72,000 that we made this year after okay. we paid overtime. So we, over we didn't make uh, we, we don't make money <laughs> to cover <laughs> to cover <laughs> expenses. Uh, That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> the Understood. Of, uh, charges. Now when when you know you 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 bring up a point earlier about the overtime being related to water and sewer improvements or what have you. I, it's safe to assume that water and sewer is paying for that overtime. Uh, those roads, the water crew will have to be out there to make sure that the county lifts all of the uh, turnoff caps and I'm the valves and stuff. About the and, previous and, year. And, the, free, and, and the, the water and sewer pays for a lot of the uh, costs associated with with all of their improvements or any of those improvements. Well, they should pay for all the engineering costs, correct? Uh, often we do. Well, it I don't be. know about all of it. Well, I mean, it should, any the, all the all the costs related to water and sewer improvements, will be at the engineering I, downstairs and everyone else that's that's working on those improvements should be billed to the utility rather than billed under the our municipal tax rate. The the way we worked it out, Lou and I, you know, addressed that. And, and Lou only wanted to put the water main in. He didn't want to pave the road. So. Our fee for the design that we work on here is is taken up by Lou milling and overlaying the road under the water utility budget. So that's kind of how we balanced it. Um, in addition to straight overtime on weekdays, that a lot of times developers will ask for weekend, like a Saturday well, that's inspection. Story. That, that, that's billed to the escrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But th uh, that's where the overtime hours come from as well, mm -hmm. is on Saturdays. Right. So. We try to keep things moving. Councilwoman Clark. I just want to interject perspective here. Regardless of where any of this money moves, whether it's the engineering or the utility, it's tax, well, the utility is a little bit different because, but it's taxpayer dollars. Yes. So anytime we pat ourselves on the back because we've got a pilot program, we gotta recognize that the schools are cut out of that money and it has to be made up somewhere. So a dollar isn't really saved until it goes back to the taxpayer's pocket. Oh, I agree. I was just uh, more concerned about accounting for it and showing different things here yeah. and, and all of that to make certain that, that you know everybody's budget is reflective of where the money's actually being spent. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up in the workshop is uh, Public Works, Water, Utility, sewer utility. Step up. All your hats. <laughs> Stay <here. laughs> Good evening. Which hat you talking Good evening, about? Council President, if I can make a request, since I haven't looked at the budget books since 10 years ago when I was last up here, if yes. the presenters could tell me what page they're looking at. You're on 33. page 32. Big help. Thank for you. For public works. There was a little on the bottom. And then 86 for the water and 78 for the sewer. I was, uh, please say that again. again. 86 for the water and 78 for the sewer. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, I'm Dan Losick, uh, Director of Public Works. Uh, and like the mayor had stated, uh, we have added the water and sewer utility to the Public Works Department. Uh, we feel that uh, teamwork is our goal and that the addition to of another uh, another uh, department with uh, public works, we can utilize our resources uh, and, and pool them together to uh, provide efficiencies for the township. Um, with that being said, our uh, department affects residents every single day, whether you turn your water on, you, you have them to use the shower, uh, travel the roadways, get rid of your waste so it's a it's a service di driven department uh it's a large department uh we and we try to b provide the best uh service we can we can for the uh, most efficient manner um in terms of our 2018 budget it's relatively flat on a um operating expense uh point of view 
And I just wanted to uh, kind of highlight each each division that we have and uh, what we accomplished last year, as well as uh, part of our goals going forward. Last year, we, we crack sealed 25 miles of roadway. So our goal there was to um, lengthen the, the period of time that uh, was needed for reconstruction for a roadway, uh, working in conjunction with the uh, Department of Planning and Engineering to try to stretch those dollars uh, down the road. And then our goal this year is to um, do something a little bit more proactive, and we're going to try to seal coat a few roads that don't involve uh, manholes and curb work and uh, to protect the roadway from water intrusion and, uh, again, lengthen, lengthen the useful life of those roadways uh, because that has been shrinking over a period of time. With our solid waste uh, budget, uh, we think that one of our accomplishments is the My Waste app. We think it's the best way to get information out to our residents in the most timely fashion and to keep it up to date and, uh, and, and, and be paperless. We won't, we'd like to, to, to do that. So our goal, I mean, not really our goal, but we are, uh, this is the last year of our solid waste contract and recycling contract this year. So we will be going up to bid this year. So we can't anticipate um, what the costs are, I, I assume they're going to go up. Everything usually does go up. So we just have to be uh, aware of that for, for the following year. Um, division of recycling, um, just a, a, a topic on, I'm sure everyone's mind, uh, branch collection. Well, with the winter storm we had uh, last week, we do collect branches every third week. Uh, you need to call uh, um, the Department of Recycling at 732-390-6984 uh, to schedule a collection. Uh, tied and bundled, no larger than four feet, and no more than 50 pounds. And our goal in recycling this year is to, uh, to get some community help. Uh, all of our recycling goes to uh, what they call um, materials recovery facility. And, and part of that process is, uh, majority is, is mechanical. And um, we ask that residents, when they use their containers for their, for their commingled items or plastic bottles and cans, that they don't put plastic bags in, shop right bags and, and things like that in there because that gets intertwined with some of the equipment at the facilities and if it's losing money for them then they don't give the money to the haulers which then doesn't in turn give the money to us on our on our rates so we just asked if residents can put just straight materials into those into those uh our recycling barrels it's a small little uh thing as to opposed to putting them in plastic bags and then putting the bags into and the putting bowl. the whole thing in yeah You're if we can separate that out we not recyclable the plastic it, bags or those exactly. very thin bottles of water that are uh, are just you know they just clog it rather than yeah uh, the, most of the process is is a, a mechanical process that has a, a, a turning mechanisms and those things get wrapped around and then they have to shut the whole plant down the process to clean those things and and they aren't recycled it's just gonna be waste anyway so although the idea I'm sure is to that it's plastic and it's gonna be recycled that's the thought process it, it just isn't reality. Um, as uh, Mr. Potkolsky had stated before, uh, part of our accomplishments in building maintenance was um, helping with the uh, improvements in the construction inspection uh, department in um, making it a better fit for the workplace of, of the employees there. And an additional accomplishment was uh, the HVAC units in, this, in the municipal building. We replaced all of the HVAC units with high efficiency units last year and uh, we did it with a budget that was um, approved by the council, I believe it was two years ago. So we were able to do that with that money. We got all the units replaced with that money with the high efficiency units. And then our goal of the upcoming year of 2018 is to um, look to the senior center. We're gonna look to do some upgrades over there uh, to modernize some things and uh, meet the needs of the, of the new director over there. The division of water production. So, uh, with our accomplishments there was uh, the Summerhill Water Tower. Uh, long process to to paint a tower. We had some some issues with uh, with the tower when it was depressurized, and uh, that's up and running. Accomplishments of the water maintenance division. Uh, we had no contractors involved in the water main break season. I'll call it. Um, 
we had we had a bunch of water main breaks in a short period of time, but with the um, consolidation of the two departments, we utilized the uh, staff from uh, the road division over with the people from water and sewer, and we were able to accomplish all, all of those uh, water main breaks in-house. So we, uh, we think that what we were trying to accomplish with teamwork and consolidation of the departments uh, definitely worked out in that. I think you'd be remiss if, if you don't recognize in that inclement weather and some of those very cold nights, the water crew worked all night on water breaks, and when it's uh, 30, 20, or 20, 10 below or 10 out, and working in cold water is really a task. They were they just did a great job with all the breaks, and uh, we're very fortunate to have the uh, personnel you have on the water crew. Yeah, they're they're a hard they're a hard hard working bunch. Inclement weather, um, less than ideal conditions, and uh, with with no complaints. Uh, it's, it's really a testament to all the employees down there. Our our goal this year is to identify any of the. Um, uh, lead and copper lines that we think uh, should be replaced. So we're going to try to be proactive and get ahead of um, state standards and replace anything that we feel, uh, w you know, ahead of what are of what we're required to do. So we're identifying those, and we have replaced a couple already. But it, uh, before a roadway gets reconstructed, we're trying to identify those things, get them out of the the work zone of the roadway, and we can uh, then continue that work into the home. Uh, to provide um, some relief for those residents that may be affected by those lines. People need to understand we don't have lead pipes in the street, which I saw you. <laughs> it's the gooseneck that connects into our pipe and goes into the home. And, and that connection going to the home and sometimes older homes have lead pipes. It's, so it's not our system that has the problem. It's, it's the homeowners that have attached to it or the commercial sites that are old along Route 18. And so they're going to identify those as proactive to protect the public, but your water system has no lead pipes in it and is uh, high quality water and has no issue. Uh, the, uh, the accomplishment of the sewer maintenance division, we're, uh, we're, we're currently working on that. We're relining the, uh, the sewer line on Edgeboro Road, and uh, that will help with our, with our costs, we, we think, going forward with uh, infiltration and inflow, which would reduce down our flow so that we're in the midst of doing that currently. So it's a, a, a 2017 into a 2018. Uh, our goal going forward with the sewer division is to um, obtain a, a, a a new sewer camera where we can map all of our uh, infrastructure uh, using um, GIS as well as a um, something they call a lateral launch which would allow us to access a sewer lateral from inside the main and identify if the issues are on our side or on the homeowner side. Um, not to place blame but in order to pinpoint it uh, uh, more accurately where those, uh, where those issues are and then have that located and, and have it on our, our, our GIS system. And another um, uh, plan of ours is to um, grow the SCADA system that we have for um, the water uh, production, which is a monitoring and, and uh, data acquisition um, system. So we have water personnel at the water filter plant 24 seven and we want to put our, our sewer pump stations on that same system to try to uh, eliminate some of the costs we have of uh, security systems monitoring it for us. We think that our staff can do that better. We think uh, that in, in a long term process we can lower those costs. The heavy snow blitz which we got uh, last week and during the depth of the snowstorm when it was snowing the most heavy, the site to site from the tower out here to the transportation center, we did not lose contact and it was able to get site to site the whole time. We connected that two years ago so that we would reduce the phone lines. We're going to do the same with the pump station off, sum off uh, Summer Hill Tank and site to site so that there'll be no phone lines and that SCADA system that will control both the water utility and the sewer system and take advantage of the new camera that he's gonna buy so that even in the worst of conditions, it'll be the site from this tower 
in the communication system that you all purchased and the quality you have here so that there'll be no down, so that if there's a power line down, it won't impact any of the communication once that site to site is done. And we hope to have that done in the next month or so. Uh, my question I think is more to Lou. On page 87, we have other contractual items. Uh, last year we budgeted 2,000, this year we're budgeting 120. Could, is that uh, our public-private partnership uh, payment for the maintenance of the water tower? Uh, no. No? What, <coughs> what, what, that, what that is is the water utility, because of the very wet summer, did not receive uh, as much revenue as we'd anticipated, and it actually turned into a, a, a situation that we had to cut the budget significantly. So uh, I've worked with Dan, worked with the utility people, and we have reduced the water utility budget uh, significantly to match the revenues that we anticipate. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very tight situation because there's no fund balance left in the water utility this year to deal with going forward. We're gonna work to rebuild that and we're coming back to you with a plan, but right now uh, those reductions you see are, are just reduction. I'm not talking about the reduction. I mean, last year it was two thousand dollars. This year it's one hundred and twenty thousand. As for, far as revenue received. No other contractual items. It's right. a, it's no, a those an expenditure. Those those are the uh, utility services contract we entered to maintain our fern tank. That's what I asked. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. That's what I asked. asked. Yeah. Okay. That's, the one. that's what I thought. I because because I saw the jump last year, which would have been. An, likely our first year and, and so that, that's an ongoing f right 40 year maintenance program mm -hmm. for all the facilities yes and that will increase on a percentage basis uh, annually won't, won't it it's uh, it will increase uh because summerhill tank will go on line and we're holding them off so that i can get it through the 19 before it goes mm -hmm. they get online and start billing and it will increase but i think uh in three years, we'll build it up to where it'll be steady, and then it'll be a steady appropriation for the next 40 years, and there'll be no increase but or we'll, decrease. But we'll, we should eventually, from that, see less bonding for maintenance or... or see a lot you know, less, right. You know. you, you'll, you'll see elimination. I mean, you while it may be costing us a little more now. You won't have to paint now. the Fern Road tank again. Right. You won't have to pay to paint the Summerhill tank again. And, and over the course of the 40 years, they'll paint it twice uh, out of that level utility services agreement. And once we do the, the Tysus Lane tank, then it, all the tanks, and you'll no longer see those costs. Uh, now I'm not sure any of us are going to be here for 40 years, but uh, in 40 years, that level, that will be flat. In about 10 years, that line will be flat, and, and for the next 30 years, I hope I'm still above. I hope I'm still above ground in 40 years. Mike, Mike better be. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to tag, oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say, just to tag along to Mr. Neely with, uh, with the storm we had, uh, by having the department together, uh, it allowed us to have some flexibility for, for parks and recreation who were inundated with uh, tree work. We were able to switch resources around uh, to help them out and fill in those areas of the snow plowing thing. And uh, I want to thank uh, John Kosick for all his help during the, the winter season, uh, Greg Pukolski, Keith Kipp, and Mike Reisner. They, they really help out uh, the township from a, a snow perspective, especially, um, and, and overall, generally. Okay. Any questions? Can I make a comment? You certainly may. Uh, Why Dan is here, I'd like to, to thank Van, Dan and his staff, along with Greg and the staff, uh, publicly, I was going to do this in the council session, but I wanted to do it while Dan was here. And thank you for quarterback. Uh, he's he's a true coach quarterback down there on a snow operation. If you ever have time uh, during the snow event to be down there with Dan, um, you'll be amazed. He's uh, one of the best in the industry, uh, working along with Greg and Keith and. Um, Michael and, and John Cossack getting things and coordinated with, with not only his department, but with the other departments and with the police department to ensure the safety of our residents. And um, if you have a chance to go there and watch Dan in action, it is, uh, it's like an orchestra. So thank you 
Dan and, and to Keith and, uh, and Greg who are here, there really is a, a, a true team effort when you see it occur. So just publicly uh, thank, thank you to all of them. We, we might be out of tune every once in a while. <laughs> but we have to do missions. So. I just wanted to ask a question. Do you have any initiatives going forward for any kind of Go Green initiatives? Uh, uh, the lighting. Plans? Well, with, with, li with lighting, um, we have been introducing these um, flat panels, the, uh, LED flat panels, which we installed in the construction inspection, uh, which we were going to try to broaden out to this particular room is all LEDs. Uh, these four foot tubes are LEDs. The only thing we don't have is the floods, which we, Phil and I have discussed, our building manager. And um, we always try to uh, work on lighting. It's the, it's the lowest hanging fruit we can, we can do. And we do have more bulbs we're gonna, we just changed out into in the um, senior center. We changed a lot of those out. Some we have to change the ballast too, but most of them are just a, a tube replacement. And what about the billing? Is there any chance of getting that to go paperless, electronic billing? Um, the billing, we don't, we don't handle any of the billing. No? No, we don't handle the billing. Uh, w work orders we do, uh, paperless. We have, uh, we have tablets, so the work is um, assigned on a tablet, which costs us in, in data fees, but it allows much more than just having a, uh, something to put it into. It gives you information right at your fingertips, and all of that is, is recorded electronically into our database. Any other questions from Dave council? Dave Park. So is that, uh, do we not get a chance to give the public a chance to speak? Uh, your public hearing is on the 23rd of April, and before you, you'll, you'll open uh, in the budget, and then the public will have a chance to have heard all the workshops, and that's when the public has a chance to uh, respond, and you can answer questions before you adopt. Okay. So be it. Can I make one comment? Uh, it's not for Dan, but I mean, you know, the mention of going paperless, I know we've talked about it up here for years. And, uh, you know, you, you need to talk to the state uh, Department of Community Affairs. Uh, they, they were going to go paperless with the budget. We spent a good 30 or 40 hours using their system. And you all got the email saying that the system doesn't work. We had to re go back and reload everything paper-wise. Uh, there are certain state regulations that, that uh, prevent us from going paperless. Uh, you can now go paperless with the public service bills, the Verizon bills, the utility bills. But other things, you still have to have. I'm, I'm more talking about our packets That's and packets. all, all your that packets. stuff that we're all picking up every, you know, every other week and, you know. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, if we had tablets, I don't think we right. would need to have it printed. And we can look, we'll look at that. Yes. I know you mentioned it before. Uh, yeah. I mean, there, there's a number of uh, software products that can fit that bill. I used one years ago called Novus Agenda um, that there, it orchestrates the whole approval process and publishing and so I on. I shred more documents than I have ever shred. I've gone through, I go through shredders. <laughs> Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? <laughs> so moved. So moved by Councilman Second. Hughes, second by Councilman Wendell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, does anybody need a couple of minutes? Okay to go. Yeah. Wait. Go ahead. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated. Mr. Perry, please call the roll. Councilwoman Clark. Present. Councilman Hughes. Here. Councilman Stanley. Here. Councilman Wendell. Here. Council President Spadafino. Here. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as required under Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, specifying the time, date, location, and to the extent known the agenda. 
by posting a copy on the Municipal Building Public Notice Bulletin Board located in the main lobby, providing a copy to the Home News Tribune and Sentinel Newspapers, posting a copy on the Township's website, and by filing a copy in the Office of the Township Clerk in accordance with the certification which will be entered in the minutes. There are no uh, presentations, uh, nothing on for the agenda session. Item for a public hearing, Ordinance 18-02, establishing a traffic control signal at the intersection of Riva Avenue and Church Lane. May have a motion. motion so moved by second. Councilman Wendell, second by Councilman Hughes. Is there any discussion? Can we get, can we get a little oversight from uh, a little insight on this from Mr. Pukowski? I know there was some question on it last time. Yeah, this is a standard procedure that needs to happen every time, anytime a new traffic signal uh, is constructed. Um, the, it's called an LTS plan is the final plan that it's an as built plan that the engineer goes out and certifies. And in order for the police to enforce any regulations at this intersection, we have to pass an ordinance, you know, basically saying that the intersection was built in conformance with the as built plan. We do this for any new signal. You know, it's, so it's basically it's, authorizing us to accept the traffic signal as built per the as built. So it, that we and it's for an enforcement it. issue, yes. Right, from a, because we don't have any money in this signal at all. Right. This is a county signal completely, and we're just doing this just for an enforcement standpoint. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the council? Is there anybody from the public wishing to speak on this issue and this issue only? Seeing none, Ms. Perry, please call the roll. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. Moving on to reports, uh, Mayor Dr. Cohen. Thank you, Council President. Just want a reminder to everybody, March 25th is the Daisy Breakfast. That's our annual um, fundraiser for the Daisy. Uh, and I think that it, uh, it's always been very well attended. It's going to be back at the Hilton again this year, and I certainly hope that everybody uh, can come. The Facebook Live that was done last month uh, concentrated on redevelopment. I know it may be a little time consuming, but it's basically the same presentation that was given at the strategic planning uh, committee uh, that was done, I believe, a couple of weeks ago to the entire public. So if anybody is interested in truly listening to what our plans are, for redevelopment in the redevelopment zones, I think that it would be a, a great source of information. I'm continuing to do that by doing that in town halls throughout the township. The town hall schedule, places, and times are listed on the township website. The uh, Facebook Live for next month, I forget the date we picked, the 20, no, I think it's the 11th. April 11th, the topic's gonna be parks and recreation. The budget process, as you know, is is underway, and so um, I think we had a lively discussion tonight. Hopefully we can uh, come to some conclusion that keeps us as flat as possible for a municipal budget going into 2018. Uh, that would be our goal. Uh, just like uh, uh, Mr. Crisculo said before, I'd like to publicly thank the Department of Public Works, Department of uh, Engineering, and the uh, uh, Parks and Rec, and our East Brunswick Police Department, all for working together to get the this past storm completely cleared up, and the rest of them for the entire season. Most people that I hear from uh, were completely uh, happy and, and thrilled that the roads were cleared so quickly and so efficiently and, um, and kept everybody safe, which is truly our number one goal here. So I know it's short. That's it for me tonight. Okay. Thank you. Council <laughs> and Township Administrator, Mr. Cascolo. Just to reiterate what uh, Dan said in the budget hearing, uh, if people have branches that they want to get out to the curb, you know, for uh, uh, it's always the third week in each month that we do that, they can call the Office of Recycling at 732-390-6984 by Friday before the third week. Uh, to put them on the list and we'll be glad to uh, pick up those bundles. The top, uh, they need to be tied on bundle branches, um, must be no longer than four feet and weigh no more than 50 pounds. Uh, residents also may drop off bundles at the recycling center uh, Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 3.30 and from Saturday from eight until four. Uh, 
and this is on our Facebook page, it's on the uh, website, and also it's uh, on the EBTV station. Um, so we encourage people to uh, bundle them and get them out to the curb, and we'll be more than happy to uh, pick them up. Uh, just we ask that they give us a call to make sure we're not going up and down streets that have uh, no bundles at the curb. We're trying to do it as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. I just question. Have, I, yes, I do have a question on the bundling. If you're taking it to the recycling center, I don't think the branches necessarily have to be bundled. You're loading it into the back of a into a bin. Into a bin, aren't right? You? So they could just put that like in right. in, a, in an extra that barrel is correct. and that is just correct. dump it. That's as correct. To if, if, if you're requesting us to yeah. pick it up, we ask it to it, keep that it size so we can do the process expeditiously. Right, but otherwise, yeah. it could be free because you'll you'll be tossing your own stuff in right into the dumpster. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, you're welcome, <laughs> Director of Law, Mr. Baker. No report this week. Clerk, Ms. Perry. No. Is there any council uh, reports? Any committee ad hoc committee? None. All right. Moving on to the uh, public portion. Anyone from the public wishing to speak, approach the podium, giving your name and address. You may have five minutes to speak, direct all of your statements and questions to the chair. Is there anyone in the public wishing to speak? Step right up. Thomas Jarrow, Harrison Avenue. Good evening. Hope all are well. I'm here to discuss the topic of Main Street, uh, the entirety of Main Street from the cerebral border all the way to the Spotswood border. So I'm not here to either endorse or repudiate any thoughts or ideas to date and uh, specific to terms of Main Street, the historic district or the library or any um, presentations that may have been made specific to a, a southeast entrance to the township of East Brunswick. That's not the purpose. Um, neither here also to ask the area to be deemed in need of redevelopment. Well, not at this moment anyway. Uh, there's enough, there's existing capacity and structure that does reside on that road, specifically on the northbound section. Why I am here tonight is to, can you to, con to continue to raise awareness um, for the status of Main Street, the entire stretch of Main Street, including the area that would be called the President Street section, um, to maintain its integrity and its character for the entire area. Again, Main Street outside of the historic district has no less than three, currently three, shuttered businesses. If you were to go to where the 18 bridges, if you were to pull in that old uh, post office, I believe it would be next to the barber shop. Uh, you come to the construction complex, which where Arisa is, then you have Stewart's, a car lot, now recently a deli that's closed, and the home next to that has also been vacant for over two years now. That's a, a private matter, but nonetheless, there are several homes also. These are all residing on the northbound side of Main Street. So that area is, is teetering, if you will, on the area. Long-term vacancy can lead to blight. So again, raising the awareness, we want to try and be proactive and not let it get to that status. Um, so again, uh, there's an also an additional item with regards to the Arisa complex. It is under construction at the moment. I, I do believe there's been some stalled issues in terms of maybe some permits or I, I don't know the specifics. I know someone from our group had reached out to the township. I don't know how, um, I, I need to get some more of the specificity on those items. But again, the complex has started. And since it started, if there is any potential that we can to get that complex built because it's a construction site in an area, uh, let's do what we can to get that facility built. Uh, to allude to Councilwoman Clark's um, comment with and regarding paving on Main Street, there could be a potential conflict of construction and paving at the same time. I don't know if that would exist, but that would be something we might want to pay attention to where large vehicles would be entering that construction complex. At the same time, we might potentially have county paving scheduled there. So that would be something I would ask if we could please be cognizant of, because that would add to an already congested area in terms of traffic. So uh, respectfully, I'm j again just asking to, to continue to keep this awareness. Um, and any businesses that would come to East Brunswick that might not fit in a specific redevelopment zone. I know everyone's, uh, again, 
point, point them down to Main Street. There are some existing uh, structure down there. Uh, and keeping with the identify a problem, be part of the solu uh, a solution and be part of the solution, we residents will do our part in terms of keeping Main Street, Old Stage clean, raising safety uh, awareness, traffic safety awareness in that area so we can promote uh, the area to attract the best businesses and residents to those vacant homes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just wanted to uh, congratulate you and, and um, promote the fact that you're such a huge um, uh, part of the neighborhood watch in that section of town, which does a whole lot to keep that area safe and clean and attractive. So I just want to publicly thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor Cohen. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, I close the public portion and move on to the consent agenda. Is there any council member who wishes to have any particular section removed? Yes, Councilman Clark. G H N N. G H N. G H and N. Okay, okay. Those three. Any others? Okay. We have a motion for the following. And it's Norman. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I thought. Oh. Did you say N or N? N. N is in Norman. Oh, the right, police cars. Wrong. My bad. Most for the following 16304 winning contract for the supply and delivery of sodium hypochlorite for Crystal Springs Family Water Park. 16305 awarding contract for opening, winterizing, and servicing of pool, slides, and splash park at Crystal Springs Family Water Park. 16303. So stipulating activities for community development block grant CDBG 2018-2019. 16307, awarding contract to Garden State Fireworks Inc. for 4th of July fireworks. 16308, awarding a contract to T-Mobile Northeast LLC for a site lease agreement for antennas at the TCC and lease on level six as permitted under NJSA 40A 11-1, 16309, awarding contract to Foley Inc. for five-year gas engine service contract as permitted under NJSA 40A 11-1, 16312, rejecting bids NJSA 40A 11-13.2, three departments of recreation, parks, and community service day camp and DAISY recreation program busing. 16313, awarding contract for various legal and professional services pursuant to fair and open process, NJSA 1944A-20.1. 16314, accepting a grant and authorizing the execution of a grant agreement between the Township of East Brunswick and the New Jersey Transit Corporation. 16315, of the Township of East Brunswick, awarding contract for tax savings rewards. 16316, authorizing an agreement between NJDOT, local aid, and the Township of East Brunswick to participate in the design and assistance program for the federal aid project, Dunham's Corner Road Bikeway. Appro approval of raffle license, RA2384, and RA2385, Daisy Associ Association, Inc., March 25th, 2018. Approval of raffle license, RA2386, 4H Middlesex County Association, Inc., August 12th, 2018. Approval of raffle license, RA2387 and RA2388, Temple B'nai Shalom, April 22nd, 2018. Approval of the raffle license RA2389 and RA2390, Daisy Association Inc. April 20th, 2018. Approval of the agenda action meeting minutes February 26th, 2018. Approval of closed section uh, executive session meeting minutes February 26th, 2018. And approval of the bill list. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by. Councilwoman Clark, second by Councilman Wendell. 
made, please call the roll. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. May I have a motion for the following, 16310 to authorize self-examination of the 2018 budget and certification by the Chief Financial Officer. Move to adopt. Second. For, um, <laughs> motion by Councilman Wendell, second by Councilman Hughes. Open for discussion. Councilwoman Clark. Uh, this goes hand in glove with the next resolution of 16311. My concern here is just that we are, be it resolved by the governing body, we found that the budget has met the following requirements, full payment of interest. We have found, okay, so this is a question of legality in terms of we were presented with this budget packet at 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Um, and I just, I mean, if, if we're under a time constraint to get all of these approvals in, then we should have had some of this done ahead well, of time. This can be moved to a, to a later date or even the date of the budget of adop adoption if the council wishes. It's not a question, I want to make this very clear, it's not a question of the, comp the competency of our chief financial officer. That I'm, I'm, I'm just we don't want to sign my name yeah. to something that um, we haven't done. We haven't reviewed any. We haven't. We just get one workshop. It's it's kind of ludicrous to put this card, up, you know, in front of the horse. Well, if you want a table, also. well, you can have a you make a request to table and then. Uh, yes, I find it disturbing that we're doing that. I have to do this. Your the purpose of uh, the resolution, if I may, is to introduce the budget. Right. Uh, once you introduce the budget, you have then 28 days uh, to examine it. All this does is allows the clerk to, to publicize it and to, to begin the process so the 28 days run. If you delay it, then we're going to be into May to adopt the budget. I think the one that she's concerned about is, is the one giving you the self-examination permission. I, I, I'm the one who's certifying that. I have certified all that and that you're agreeing. Everything is on there, I have to put my license on the line to show that the debt service is there. Well, and, and that's in the budget. And, and, and you can't introduce the budget unless you allow the self-examination because it doesn't go to the state. Uh, I, the examination all falls on me. And so they have to go in context together. Uh, and I'm not sure that uh, what your question is, but it, it, if you amend the budget between now and the end of the time of the year, you have all that opportunity. You have 28 days to review it and answer all the questions. But it's, it's a format that... Uh, if you elect not to do this, then we have to send two copies of the budget to the state and, and be at their whim to review and, and to get it done. Self-examination is a privilege they grant to certain towns. They've granted it to us. I take all that responsibility away from the state and they hold me accountable, not you. Excuse me. Go right ahead. Everybody seems, I don't know if anyone here, maybe Michael understands the point of this. There are dates in here, there are things that, that the council is saying, we have found that it's met the following requirements by the governing body and by the certification the governing body has, has met the following requirements. Now, maybe I'm misreading this resolution but we haven't done any of that yet. 16, 3, so either our budget workshops were very late, something should have come before this resolution comes up. The same thing with the, the, the next resolution for advertising. The municipal budget for the year 2018 is approved on the 12th day of March 2018. That's not true, is it? It's approved to be introduced. All that means that we well, use the word. The they use the term sloppy. The language of the law is introduced. sloppy, and I want it stipulated because when you go and when 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 you deal with attorneys all the time, it's the words that count. It's the words that are there, and not what the intent is. No, no disrespect intended, but. Do you understand? Or, but you do understand I, the point that I'm bringing I, I, up. There. I understand the councilman's question, Lou. So. Uh, are you saying that we can't introduce the budget 
just by doing the resolution for introduction of the budget that you have to do both of them? You, you have to do them both. Uh, before, before the budget is to this point, uh, the RMA has signed the budget. He has double-checked everything I've done. He's your agent, and, and you trust your auditor. So if you look on the front of the state budget, you see my signature, you see the signature of the RMA. He has looked at everything in all the debt service. He is certifying that what I've put in is correct, and he's your agent. And so you're introducing the budget so he can hold your hearings, then you have 28 days. Now, this has been the practice for since 1933 when the budget law was put in. Uh, and, and I'm sorry that this is the first time you've raised this issue, but uh, this is a standard resolution we've done every year. They've allowed us to have self-examination. We never got that. I don't believe, in, in my experience, that we got the other packet that we were provided with this time that provided the uh, paperwork. The data sheet. We got that last year. I think that was the first time I saw that, it. That's, yeah. If you look, that's one the RMA. We've always given it at the same time the mayor introduces the budget and, and gives you the presentation. And you'll see the RMA has signed that, uh, certifying that everything I've done, he has double checked. So he's your agent to check on me, and, and you're simply saying you this trust This is a question of semantics. The auditor. I'm sorry to bore everybody, but it's a question of semantics. If there is no more further comment, call the roll. Councilwoman Clark. Uh, Councilwoman Clark. No. Councilman Hughes. Yes. Councilman Stanley. Yes. Councilman Wendell. Yes. Councilman uh, Council President Spadafino. Yes. Okay. So moving on to sixteen three eleven. Introduction of the 2018 budget. Motion to approve. Budget uh, to approve by Councilman Wendell. Second, second by Councilman Stanley. There's no, did I reiterate? Did I the dates? I mean, there's. You know, I was taught you don't you don't sign a contract until all the blanks are filled in. And it's not happening here. So. That's right. That's the end of my conversation on it. And we move to go to vote. Unless anyone else has anything to add. Council. Councilwoman Clark? No. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. Moving on to 16317, awarding contract in accordance with the public contract law, NJSA 40A 11 2, 12, oh, yes, 11 12, through cooperative purchasing of the Division of Purchase. And property in the state of New Jersey in the amount of $177,804 to Winter Ford of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. A motion to adopt. Move to adopt. Second. Councilwoman Clark, second by Councilman Hughes. Open for discussion. My, my question here is there was a police vehicle that was crushed by a tree during the last storm. Yes. So, yes. I mean, I mean it, it, all I'm saying is that is this going to be adequate to cover? Replacement of that vehicle as well. Well, we'll we'll put a claim in uh, for the vehicle, and we'll also That's be true. replacing that one. Oh, we hold if necessary, and I believe it is necessary. I've seen the vehicle, so we'll put we we've already put the insurance claim in, and so the adjuster came out last week. We're just waiting for the final response from them, and then uh, we'll whatever action we need to do, we'll move forward. Okay. If it's totaled, we will go that direction and then we'll get a uh, vehicle to replace that vehicle. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Perry, please call the roll. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. Moving on, ordinance is requiring a public hearing date, March 26, 2018. Ordinance 1803 of the Township of East Brunswick. County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 3 of the Township Code of the Township of East Brunswick, entitled Article 12, Utilities. We have a motion to adopt. Motion. Motion by Councilman second. Hughes, second by Councilman Stanley. Council President, if I could explain that. The business administrator and I have begun the task of uh, uh, bringing our code book into conformance with our practices. 
Um, imagine that, Council. Wow. <laughs> so uh, this is a first attempt at doing that. There were titles in this ordinance that didn't exist, and we wanted to give the uh, administration the flexibility to have someone do various jobs, but always with the consent, uh, vice and consent of the council. Is there any other comments? Ms. Perry, please call the vote. It's worth noting this is a money savings to the taxpayers mm -hmm. of East Brunswick by combining these positions and finding efficiencies and the Public Works Department and the Water and Sewer Department have always worked hand in hand when it comes to vehicles and when it comes to sharing equipment. It is the next natural progression in that relationship and symbiotic relationship that they have. Very good. Ms. Perry, please call the roll. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. Moving on to Ordinance 1804, amending Chapter 218, Water of the Code of East Brunswick Township regarding uniform construction code changes. Motion uh, with that. Motion and second. Right. Okay. Motion by Councilman Motion. Stanley, second by Councilman Wendell. In, in light of the recent changes with the UCC and not needing uh, to get permits for siding and a couple other things on the outside of the house, we're concerned that our water reading system is going to get compromised because the meter itself is wired through the house to a mobile device that sits on the outside of the house so people can read that. So our concern is that if that wire gets snipped or whatever, we will have uh, many issues as, a, you know, if they don't come in and, and apply. So this will require them to come in and post a, a pretty much a, a, a fee to ensure that they're not going to do that and that wire will be replaced it, when they're doing the siding project on their house. It's in the nature of a security deposit. Exactly. They'll get it back if everything works. Yes. yes. That's important. It's very important for the water utility to be able to read those meters. Right. And as uh, Councilwoman Clark pointed out, it's very important that the people know that if they don't do any damage, that they get their money back. Ms. Ms. Perry, please hold the roll. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Hughes? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Spadafino? Yes. Moving on, is there anything for new business? No. For the good of the order, we good do have a cause. Piece of new business, no? No, we're not prepared oh, yet. Oh, okay. Not prepared. Sorry. <laughs> Councilwoman Clark. Um, I just want to applaud not only the township employees during the storms that we've experienced. Yeah. I fortunately, as is my want, was out of town when it hit. <laughs> <laughs> just happens that way. Um, but coming back, I realized the extent of the snow and everything, but it was, it was gratifying to see the, the, uh, the striping on the roadways from, from our, our salt, uh, not our salt, but our saline distribution, um, the way the trees were efficiently cleaned up, stacked up, um, and it was a good job done by all, and I think that a lot of the cleanup has to do with the actual neighbors, the residents who, who take us as a community and help out instead of saying, I'm a taxpayer and that's not my job. And it's, it's well noted and appreciated. Uh, and kudos to all of the directors that did so well handling the, the fallout from this. Yeah, applause. Anything else for the good of the cause? We have a motion to adjourn. So Councilman moved. Stanley, second by Councilman Hughes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're out.